101.5 WHCP Radio, and we've got Chris Carter joining us here in the studio. Uh, Chris, you're not actually in our studio. You're in, are you in your studio? Yes, I am in my own studio in Lebanon Township, New Jersey. But you've been spending a lot of time here in uh, Cambridge recently, or at least your art has been spending a great deal of time here in Cambridge recently. Tell us about your show at uh, the Dorchester Center for the Arts. The show there is titled What If?, and it's based on uh, the evolution of my style and technique over a 10-year period of time following the death of my mother. And I transitioned from representational work to more intuitive work at that time. And if people don't know what that means, they need to come see it in person, right? I encourage them to come see it in person because they'll see so many different facets of the way that an artist can work. I know that I'm not the only artist who doesn't just work in one medium and uh, one style. So I have ventured off into all different areas of portraiture and realism, total abstraction, live painting. I use ink, watercolor, charcoal, pencil, oil, acrylic, water, you know, mediums of all sorts mixed together. Whatever makes a mark is fair game. Uh, So it's all flat art, no sculpture? This is flat art. And what I find interesting most recently is that I think I probably started off more as a sculptor, as a small child. And I didn't consider myself an artist for a long, long time because um, two-dimensional work was not really much of a strength of mine. This was something you had to learn and grow into over time? Absolutely. I I didn't have natural talent for drawing, um, at least not to do the representational work that was considered to be art by the teachers back in the 50s and 60s. And this, the abstract art was really starting to take a place in America in the 60s, I'd say, or the late 50s, but it really hadn't gotten into my home. Um, my family loved Norman Rockwell and everything that looked absolutely real. And um, and that's what just, you mean by representational. Uh, you mean things that, that look uh, a- as they are without yes. Im- improvisation and I- impressionism. Well, even a little bit more than that, impressionism can be representational. When you look at Van Gogh's work, you see a sky, you see sunflowers, even though it's abstracted, or Monet, the water lilies, those still are recognized as water lilies. So that would still be considered representational. It wouldn't be considered realism. Realism goes more towards photography and a cup looking exactly like a cup. I was really a born abstract artist and didn't recognize that until well into my 50s. And I'm embracing it more now that I'm in my 60s. Were you a uh, late bloomer on the uh, artist scene? Oh, absolutely. A terribly late bloomer, at least in my own mind. (laughs) I was laughing the other day when I revealed to someone that I didn't consider myself an artist until about five years ago. You know, that's a shock to most people who have known me as an artist for most of my life, but I didn't really feel that that was true. I felt that I was still just chipping away at that uh, mountain to climb to where I get to the uh, summit and call myself an artist. Yeah, what was the internal uh, uh, flip of the switch that you said, no, I think I am an artist after all? I... I think it was remembering that back when I was probably five or six, I stayed all day long outside in the middle of a snowstorm, carving a gallery out of the ice mounds that had been formed by the plows that went by, making little niches in the bank and carving sculptures to put into my museum. And I I really had not thought about that for so many years, and I thought, well... No one would do that unless they must have had that something inside of them back then. And I thought that I I had tried hard to be an artist. You know, I admired people who could create in that way. And I, I just hadn't considered myself as one of them. I just kept trying. And it was the hardest thing for me to do, to draw. Um A lot of other things came easily. Music came easily, dance, playing instruments, all of math, science, 
all those things came very easily to me. And drawing was absolute torture. So I was, worked hard at it. Was that part of the appeal to, uh, to conquer something that wasn't that uh, natively uh, uh, easy for you, like it sounds like so many other things were? We hate yes. you. We hate you, by the way. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, it was. I knew that I would never, ever be bored. And to me, that was the most dreadful idea, to be bored. In, in a world like this that's filled with such beauty and movement and excitement and sounds, um, how could one ever be bored? But I did find myself sort of tuning out when things came too easily. Um, so I just kept trying the things that were hardest for me. Chris Carter, art.com, your website, you see an amazing variety of art and artwork there. Much of it, I think, uh, right now the uh, trumpet is up, and that's that's realism to me. I mean, that looks like the real thing, or pretty close to it. Um, and and then other works that are uh, completely abstract, and then a lot of, I guess, what you would call impressionism. But all of it's so well executed. I mean, uh, for anyone who has not seen your works, they really need to come over to the Dorchester Center for the Arts and take a look in person. You'll be here on uh, the 12th, right? Second Saturday, the 12th? Yes, I will be there all day. I'll be teaching a workshop, but then we will be meeting again for the second Saturday, which should be fun. It'll be the second opening. I believe this is the very first of a two-month show at Dorchester Center for the Arts. And what I like about the two-month shows is it gives people people time to visit the exhibit and time to revisit the exhibit after they've thought about it a while and want to see something else. What's nice about this is it's the entire floor, so there's plenty of room to see the transition and to see how I I work realistically, drawing trumpets and objects every day. I, that's, that's a daily practice for me because it keeps my eye and hand honed. And I, I don't just throw paint around. Um, in order to be able to throw paint and recognize when it works well, I need to keep looking at the world as it is and see how form is created. To draw a car, I can imagine a car. It's sort of a box with four wheels. But to really know what makes that a specific car, I have to look. And the only way for me to do that is to draw and to draw realistically. So that I do every day. I just don't consider that as my heart and soul of expressing my life. Well, that's what's so wonderful about your work. Uh, I think the last time you were here, you told me the story that uh, you were in some show. Uh, someone accused you of, uh, of bringing in multiple artists, and, and it was only supposed to be a single artist. And, and, and how could you do that? And you had to explain to them, no, this is actually all me, uh, just a very wide range of styles. Yes, that I think it took both of us as surprise. And uh, the woman who asked me was a gallery owner up the street, and she just, I'm not sure if she was pleased to find out it was all my work or not pleased to find out it was all my work. Gallery owners have a very difficult time with me because, as it was told to me one time, if 200 people were standing in a room and they all owned a Chris Carter, no two of them would be the same. And so do I market you as an abstract painter? Do I market you as a painter of nudes? Do I market you as a super realist? You know, how how do I tell people what you are? And I I always thought it was a strength, that diversity, because no matter what mood I'm in, I can express myself visually. And if I learn something and master it or come somewhat close to mastering it, I don't want to keep repeating that over and over again. I've already done it. So I'll break away and start something that I don't know how to do at all. And after 64 years of that, you achieve a relative degree of competency in a lot of different areas. So it looks like several artists put the show together when it's really just one. What will you be teaching in this workshop? I'll be encouraging people to really let loose and play. Um, we're going to be working in watercolor, and we're going to be working abstractly. So that removes the fear that people have of not being able to draw well. It, it brings in other things, like looking at, at the real elements of art, which are shape and value and color, and then... People will get to watch to see how watercolor can create soft edges and 
fuzzy edges and different texture and see what happens when they combine one color with another on a on a wet piece of paper and what happens when you just throw a little bit of, pa- of paint at a paper or atomize it through a straw-like device in your mouth and spray paint onto other paint. It's going to be very, very fun. Pretty much what, what Will and I did in the demonstration second Saturday in February. Will did was Yes. Mm-hmm. And he was just fabulous. He, he did not work that way. He did not work in watercolor and was a little nervous going into it, but he was such an amazing sport and he turned out remarkable work. And with the intuitive work, I have no idea when I make the first mark on a piece of paper where it's going to go. And I don't know until it starts to take on a personality and, and speak to me, and then I nurture it. And that's what I'm going to be encouraging people to see and feel in the workshop. Uh, aside from getting over their fear of watercolor. You do not have to be tight and precise with watercolor. It is far more forgiving and playful than than a lot of people think. Uh, but it's what the viewer brings into it. You don't need to know my story. You bring your own story into it. And that, for me, is the magic of art. Well, we encourage people to come out and discover their own works under your guidance and tutelage, as, as well as seeing uh, the range of styles and, and, and skills uh, and gifts that uh, you've accomplished. Um, and what time is the workshop? Uh, the workshop is from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m., and it's at the Dorchester Center for the Arts, which is 321 High Street, Cambridge, Maryland. And I have to say that the show that's hung has been hung better than any other exhibit that I've had. Jeanette did a fabulous job hanging it. It was not an easy show to hang because it did cover such a different span of work. 